Hi everyone, welcome. I'm preparing to check in on my red wigglers here. These these worms are living in my newest worm bin, which isn't even that new anymore. It's over two months old at 65 days of age. We've checked in here six times so far and fed them. Or maybe there were five check-ins and the sixth feeding was actually on the day of the launch of the system. I can't recall exactly. Um, on the day that we launched the system, we got the feedback of all the viewers who told us that... Um, you know, they thought they had maybe this many worms or that many worms. We took the averages of everyone's estimate and we came up with a combined estimated worm count of 3,218 that originally populated the system when we first launched it. And then um, 12 days ago, was it 12 days ago? No, 24 days ago. So the last check-in was 12 days ago and the previous check-in before that was 12 days also. And at that point, we had estimated that we had added 392 more worms, bringing us to a grand total of over 3,600 worms thought to occupy this system here. And um, let's gradually do away with everything here, but it's all meant to remind me to explain what everything's going on here. One of the things that's going to be replaced is this top covering. Even last time, the whole middle of it had been chewed out by worms, so I grabbed the replacement for that and I thought that this paper that would go in with the feeding today could just um, become supplementary bedding. Bedding supplementing is just something we haven't been doing in here because the bin is just so jam-packed with material it's almost um, filled to capacity so we've been very careful not to add bedding because the system's overloaded with bedding basically. And here's the feeding for today. Quite a huge feeding for a single bin but yeah there's a lot of mouths to feed here right so the, um, the one thing interesting about what we've been doing in this system, which is um, a little bit different from all the other systems I've got, this is just grit, pulverized eggshell, is that um, past couple feedings now we've been not giving them frozen foods. All the food has just been raw, you know. So we, um, we're sticking to that now. This will be at least the third time that we've um, given them raw versus frozen food. All my systems always get frozen food, so this is definitely a deviation for what I normally do. So the last thing to get out of our way is something that we may or may not even need to use today. This is the stuff that I use to control the gnats and fruit flies or whatever, so I, um, I kind of improvise a way of preparing it and then I throw it into an old detergent squirt bottle, a little squirt bottle that I've been getting a great deal of use out of for many years now, so I'm really glad I was able to sort of salvage that thing from the recycling bin and put it to good use. So the um, the top covering cardboard is wrapped with plastic, preventing moisture from exiting the system via evaporation. So all that moisture that would otherwise have been lost sits here underneath the plastic covering and then uh, totally soaks this piece of paper, making the paper into something that the worms can really easily chew into paper is just made out of wood pulp and wood pulp is right up their alley but I think we had already seen how bad that deterioration of this bag had gotten to even last time and we um, we tried to unfold it and try to cover more area with what remained but uh, we I think we already kind of could forecast during even the last visit that the top covering was on its last legs so I don't know how much of the last feeding, and I'm so used to seeing how worms break down stuff that is fed to them frozen. So this is definitely a, a deviation. The thing that we added here was a whole bunch of large chunks of pumpkin. So why don't we, um, why don't we not try to hit the ar hit this like an archaeologist? An archaeologist would like carefully pick everything away. Let's just be more like a, a ditch digger <laughs> and just excavate and see what we see. So this um, is a feeding that would go way back, and I even used um, a similar one to it as like one of these, you know, decorative gourds. I think I've got another one that actually looks more close to what was here. So there's like probably a part of this had been bulbous at the end, and we've been just a little ch taking a little chip mark, you know, little bits and pieces off the end during each check-in, but not going too crazy and leaving the rest of it just for the worms to work on. And let's see, I don't know, 12 days, raw pumpkin. Does it matter if pumpkin was frozen or raw given to the worms? Could very well be um, irrelevant if it comes to the worms wanting to either chew it up and eat it or not. And it does seem like um, I don't even see any of the, the pumpkin, you know, the orange skin of the pumpkin. 
Sometimes a little bit of that remains as leftovers, although, you know, maybe I spoke too soon. Perhaps that's what we're seeing here. A little tiny piece of remaining pumpkin skin from one of the chunks that they received, maybe. It's very hard to tell, so I wouldn't want to, you know, say for sure what that is, but it could be. Oh, what am I seeing here? Food scraps. <laughs> Although I would think that this too is probably just paper thin with very little, if any. Yeah, see this part of it that's connected, it looks very much like that. I just tore it, I felt it tear in my hands. That piece actually still has some color on it. Other stuff I'm putting aside here, these are like the um, the outer husk of the seed that you find inside of a uh, mango. Like the outer husk. And I do see a good many springtails hanging out in the system, but I didn't see any flying insects. I was kind of watching to see if anything sort of buzzes out of here in my face. And these little tiny round objects that I'm pulling out now, those are chunks of um, chunks of avocado seed, which if you're careful, you don't let the knife slip on the round circular shape of it or you know, spherical shape of it. As you're cutting slowly and gently, you can kind of get your knife to, per, you know, penetrate the relatively hard material. And then after that, once you're started, it cuts through quite easily. So I took, um, I took one of those pits and I made little discs out of it. I found another smaller one over here somewhere and placed it here too. But um, my thought was that perhaps if we, chop it up into small pieces, it would uh, get broken down by the worms a little more quickly than if it went in whole. I think there was a feeding though, previously, where they got avocado, it might be the shell of it that we're seeing right here, and the pit of that thing went in too, but none, none of the check-ins over the past few um, times we've been in here, we haven't come across the, the whole avocado pit, although even even now, I have a suspicion that it could still be intact. There's still the possibility that we might stumble on a, a little spherical object in here. But, you know, why don't we proceed with getting these little guys fed? I think we've already encountered a good many interesting slow composting items that we'll just continue to run into in future check-ins. And yeah, I made a pretty good size hole because the feeding they're getting is pretty good size. Or at least it appears that way to me. But I do feel like I've got to, you know, treat this system accordingly, taking into consideration it's pretty good sized population, so I don't want to underestimate what they're capable of going through. And it does seem like they're do doing really well in here. The one thing that you always kind of noticed in the very beginning was like, oh my goodness, all these, all this shredded material, all this shredded paper cardboard everywhere that the stuff, this bin was made out of originally. You know, it was so heavily, um, What's the, the ratio, I guess, right? Like in the very beginning, when you put the worms in, they haven't created any castings. The ratio is just 100%. It's all still the original bedding. No worked down material. But now, you know, it does start to appear to me, at least, like we've got a good bit of, uh, a good bit of castings material beginning to come together here. Usually when we're uh, dishing out the foods that I feed, You'd be hearing all this crunching of all the material cracking and breaking because it's frozen solid. <laughs> Not today. You can kind of hear that squeakiness of the um, of the cabbage leaves getting folded. This right here is that stem of the on which you know each of these is where the Brussels sprout attaches. So you could buy this whole stem of this thing. I got a few of these and I've got some of them in the freezer, but you know I I bypassed the freezing of this piece specifically because I wanted to put it into this system here where we've kind of turned this into the, the system where we don't freeze so that we can kind of observe how things might be a little bit different in here than all my other systems where the food always goes in frozen. I'm still a big fan of freezing, you know, and I don't plan on stopping um, stopping it because there's just, just numerous benefits, not least of which is the fact that, you know, if you're hanging on to stuff to eventually feed to worms, you're keeping it... Um, in a state that you can pretty much keep it that way that way forever so you're not under pressure to get rid of it it's not stinking up um rotting away you know making a mess so 
all other little benefits. I'm sure people can probably kick them into the comments and tell us what some of the other bennies are to free freezing your warm foods. But I saved this for last. I bumped into it earlier. You might have noticed me handling it. It's the cork, and um, it definitely is making um, progress. It's an object that we had looked looked around for numerous times. Um, sort of like that avocado pit that I think is floating around in here too. But that was also on our lookout and we finally unearthed it a couple check-ins ago. So I'm trying to keep it front and center so that it can sort of remain within view and easy, um, kind of an easy find if we do go looking for it. But I think that's it for our feeding. I did not apply any of the uh, mosquito dunks because I didn't see any reason to anymore. Perhaps the problem is solved. This did seem like it was the, the last place during that last check-in 12 days ago where I saw any flying insects whatsoever anywhere in any of my systems. So this really, I think, was the last place. But nevertheless, I have the stuff right there on hand to be applied anytime you run into little flying insects trying to make themselves at home in the worm bin. So we found a lot of nice um, untouched, if, as far as I could tell. I don't hardly see any casting material in, a, in that stuff. So it does seem to me like actually helping that um, stuff along is uh, best done by sort of blending it in with other already well worked material. I think that just gives the worms um, easier access to the stuff so that they're still kind of you know running through stuff that they're really comfortable being in but now they're also encountering all this additional fresh bedding material kind of combined to make it a little bit more hospitable to be explored and occupied. Had this um hard object in my hand. I thought for a moment it might have been an avocado seed. But you know what that is? Pumpkin stem. Definitely coming along good in the worm bin. <laughs> Let's place that down into the feeding area as well. Yeah, you know, I mean, oh, here's another piece of that. Uh, can we break it? Yeah, it breaks pretty readily. Stuff's kind of brittle. More avocado pit disc. I don't think it was one of the ones we saw earlier. It was just a, now a third one we found this go around. So yeah, I think the system's doing quite nicely. The last thing to be done here is just to replace their um, replace their top cover. But I'm also kind of noticing, and since I didn't have coffee to give them today, there's no feeding zone indicator after emptying a used coffee filter's contents into the feeding zone. But guess what? I've got a little collection of them over here on hand, so comes in pretty handy. We can mark exactly where we last fed. And you know, I bet you if we were to come back in here in another 12 days, we might see a similar outcome. I mean, it's not all pumpkin. It's still pretty good stuff that I think that they're going to like. I mean, yeah, that, that one thick stem from the Brussels sprout, I know that's going to certainly be here. I'm definitely curious to see how that thing progresses. And then I'll eventually have a chance to put some of that stuff frozen into other worm bins. And then we'll be able to compare. All right, everyone, that's it for our check-in. Now, with the relatively young, but still... I mean, relatively middle-aged at this point, but still, in my book, the youngest of my systems, a 65-day-old bin of red wiggler worms, doing a really nice job in here, and I think we'll be upping their um, application of bedding at this point since um, I'm seeing so many nice castings develop. But you saw there was plenty of, you know, still untouched stuff for them that they can um, certainly work on before we need to give them anything fresh. So whatever, maybe we'll decide next time. Maybe we'll be skimpy on the bedding next time too <laughs> all right everyone but that's it for the video i got a few things to take care of getting uh cleaned up and put away i'm not going to waste your time with that before i go really quick let me just say thank you thank you so much for watching hopefully you enjoyed the video if you did as always please don't forget to leave me a quick thumbs up before you go that's always really appreciated and if you haven't done so already please also consider subscribing to the channel that's very much appreciated as well all right everyone thanks for watching have a great day bye now